All right, so skin retouching is not my favorite part of the portrait editing process. And if there is a tool that can aid or speed up this time intensive hands-on process, I'm eager to test it out, use it and add it to my workflow. It's also beneficial if I can achieve the same or even better results than a complicated software like Adobe Photoshop. Now, I've been using Luminar Neo for all my skin retouching over the years. And recently the company Skyloom released a dedicated portrait editing and skin retouching software called Apity. So Apity is sponsoring today's video and I want to take you along as we retouch some photos from a recent portrait shoot here in the studio using both soft natural lighting and harsh constant lighting. I also want to share some tone and contrast tips to apply to a raw file before retouching to get this soft filmic look. So we're really going to test the full potential of Apity and let's jump onto the computer and do some AI magic. All right guys, so this is the software Apity and this is the photo that I'm going to be showing how to retouch. If we zoom into the photo, you can see that Lani here, the model, has beautiful skin, but we do see quite a bit of shine and we are getting a few blemishes. I also want to make these eyes a little bit brighter. I want to improve the eyebrows, make the lips a little bit more saturated and just give the portrait just a little bit more pop. You'll see on the right here that we can adjust all of our different basic parameters our exposure, our curves, you can adjust the color, etc, etc, which I'm going to show you how I do a little bit later on in the video. So if you head up underneath the basics tab to the portrait retouching, this is the dedicated tab for retouching skin. So I like to boost this blemish removal tool and some AI photo editing softwares will kind of get this wrong and they'll chip out a nose or sometimes in the eyes. But once this loads up, you'll see that that's just done a fantastic job just to remove some of those little blemishes. So if we go a before and after, you can see that it's just blending in these little blemishes here and you can really boost this up without a worry in the world and it's not going to make the photo look fake. I'm just going to reduce it down to about 60%. I like to go a little bit higher and then just reduce it a little bit. If you have a model with a lot of freckles, then you can use the freckles to remove that. And if you want to add a little bit more detail back into the skin, you can do that. Or if you want to remove a little bit of detail, just slide it back down. I'm just going to leave it at 50 as a default. So that's the first tool just to remove some blemishes really quick, really easy to do. And if we go into the skin, this is where you'll see you can start to smooth out the skin. So I like to actually boost this quite high to about 50%. You can already see that that's done some type of frequency separation. And now we're getting a very pleasant and beautiful texture to the skin. You can still see this tiny little pores, which is great. And it makes the skin retouching look really realistic. If you will notice that this photo is quite grainy, that's because I like to add grain into my photos. That's also another technique just to add a little bit of softness and texture to the skin. Dark circle removal is great for just removing a little bit of this darker skin under here. So I generally like to pull this up to about 50% as well. I also like to brighten the face quite a bit. I like quite bright and airy looks to my photos. And this is definitely my favorite tool is the shine removal. Just watch the magic happen. I mean, that just got rid of all of these shine in these highlight areas. And if we go down here to the bottom right, we can quickly have a slider and on the left is before on the right is after so you can already see even though lani has beautiful skin is this software just does the most minimal retouching to make it look as natural as possible but also it is extremely easy to use i'm just gonna move this before and after to the side and i'm gonna collapse the skin blemish and the face skin I like to have a more of a minimal setup. So let's go into the eyes. I generally don't use the iris flare. I try to make sure that my key light, which I'm using a nice window source, is having a very pleasing flare or a reflection coming into her eye. Redness removal is great for portraits when you have red eyes. Eye whitening, I like to boost this to about 18% or 20% or so. And then eye enhancement, you can go a little bit overboard on this one. Uh, that's the same for Luminar Neo. These browner eyes or more hazel eyes, I like to have it around 17 for more blue or lighter color eyes, I'll only have this around 5%. So let's clap the eyes and let's go into the mouth. If the model has their teeth showing, you can widen the teeth. 
If you boost the slider to 100%, it doesn't do anything, which is great as you would expect. And then also with teeth brightening, it does brighten the teeth as well. And why I just tested this out is to make sure that it's not doing anything funny to the lips, which it didn't, which is great. Now these last two tabs is something I don't really use, but you can add makeup, you know, you can change the contour if you want. If you want to do that, you know, you can boost this right up, add the feather and you can change the makeup and the structure of the nose. That's pretty advanced. I generally don't like to change the contour and the makeup too much. The only thing that I like to use in here is the eyebrows enhancement. Now you can go too much on this, but I like to keep it around 15% just to make those eyebrows just stand out a little bit more. And I also like to saturate the lips just a little bit and just darken them slightly. You can change the tone of them and the color. I'm just gonna keep that how it was. So just zooming out and that's our original image. I think the lighting and the overall composition, the editing is on par, but if you just slide the slider across, you can just see how much more of a cleaner look we are getting. We're getting a very professional retouch and I'm very happy with this image. So that is how I've been retouching my photos with Apity over the last few weeks using their beta version, which is linked in the description down below for a pre-sale. Before we end this video, I just want to quickly show some advanced techniques regarding the tone and the contrast of skin for more challenging lighting conditions. On this shoot, I was mainly using soft natural light, which gives you a much softer look to the skin as the name implies. But I did use a Aperture 300C with the Aperture Spotlight attachment to achieve this effect. And I really do like this set of photos, but the issue with constant or hard lighting is that it can create more shiny skin and just highlight more blemishes on the skin due to the increase in contrast. So hence before retouching, I like to adjust the tone and the contrast of the skin. Now, Apity allows you to complete the full editing process, not just limited to skin retouching. So let's jump back onto the computer and demonstrate how this works now. So this is my example photo. Now this is a raw file. I shot this on the Nikon ZF. There will be a video about that camera coming out next week. And this is the Amran 300C with the spotlight attachment. Now, if we zoom into the photo, you can see that we are getting a lot of blemishes. We can see freckles now. We're getting quite a shiny skin. And this is looking like quite a tough portrait to retouch. Now, what I like to do is set my white balance. So I'm just gonna warm this image up ever so slightly to about there. And I'm pretty happy with that. And then with my tone, you can just bring down the contrast, which looks gross, right? But I like to bring my whites down and lift my blacks right up. And you can see that already this has softened the skin so much more. So if you look at a before and an after, you can see that we're getting a much softer look to the portrait. Now, the problem with this is that we've lost all our contrast. You can see that everything just looks a little bit too faded. So what I like to do is just add a little bit more contrast back in with a simple S curve. <laughs> And that is a little bit too much. Let's just dial this in a little bit more. I'm also gonna bring these white, this white point down a little bit and just lift the blacks ever so slightly. So that's before the curve and that's with after. We zoom in and we go to a before and after up the top right. That's before, that's after. So there's one technique that I like to implement when I'm editing a raw file before I go into the retouching phase. Another thing I like to do is just adding a little bit of film grain. So you can edit everything in Luminar Neo, which we're not gonna to show today because the video would be too long, but you can change all of your different parameters, like your hue, saturation, and luminance. For example, you can sharpen, you can do your structure, noise reduction, all that good stuff, just like Lightroom. But if we head down to this little star icon, this is kind of where the film grain is. And if we zoom into the photo here, I like just to add a little bit of grain to add a little bit of texture to the skin and just blend in the blemishes a little bit. And that's just kind of one of the techniques that I like. And definitely with the tone and contrast that change it to me a more filmic look. So that is my updated workflow for skin retouching. And if you are a 
paying user of Skylum's flagship photo editor, Lumina Neo, and you're just unsure about the difference between Apity and Lumina Neo, let me just quickly clarify. Now, Lumina Neo is a dedicated photo editing software suitable for all photographers. So whether you are a street photographer, a landscape photographer, a portrait photographer, etc., it has everything you will need. However, if you are a dedicated portrait photographer, Apity is a more advanced version of Lumina Neo, especially designed just for portrait photography. The software is set to release in about two to three weeks in November 2024. So there is a link in the description down below for the pre-order sale of the beta version, which is what I was using today. And if you do appreciate my filmic photo editing style, make sure you go check out my Lightroom presets. And if you do want to see my full portrait editing workflow, make sure you go watch this video right here, which also demonstrates how I retouch my skin with Lumina Neo. All right, that's all for now, and we will see you next week. Bye for now. Enjoy your week. Let's go.